Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Nastin Padasale. In this video, we are going to discuss the answers for those questions that has been asked in shift 2 of the CSAR Leipzig examination. First, they have given a list of virus and they ask us to match the uh, respective cell surface receptor for the particular virus. Okay. So, for SARS, so here in this particular article, this particular table is very much helpful, friends. You can use this particular table for the upcoming CSAR examination. So, HIV virus, the receptor is CD4 and SARS coronavirus, the receptor is ACE2. So, I don't know the rest of two virus names so if you remember please do tell me next they ask a, a question about flowering in short day plant and long day plant so short day plant uh, the other name is long day plant which means when the night length is exceeding the critical uh, dark period so they need a long night for them to flower so if we interrupt the dark if we interrupt the night time with the flash of uh, light means this is called as night break which will be preventing the flowering Okay, whereas if you take long day plant, these long day plant will be flowering under two conditions. First condition, if the night length is shorter than the critical period, then at that time point, they will be flowering because they need huge amount of sunlight for them to flower. Second condition is that when we break the night uh, with the night break, at that time also they will be flowering. So, the small amount of flash of light during night time will also make that particular uh, flower, uh, that particular plant to flower. Okay, so this particular uh, uh, this particular diagram you can be able to find in page number six hundred of your textbook. Okay, so sixth edition of your textbook, six hundred page. Next, they were asking few statements about hemoglobin. I don't be able to get the entire statements. So, first thing. Uh, not every species will be having hemoglobin. Not every species will be having hemoglobin binder to uh, be bound to iron. If you take humans, they are having Hb and uh, Hb will be having uh, Fe that will be binding to oxygen. So that's why our blood is red in color. If you take uh, uh, octopus lobster, the color of their blood is blue in color due to the presence of some other pigment called hemocyanin and that consists of a copper. So copper will be binding to oxygen instead of your iron. Okay, so some animal, uh, some organisms like earthworm, their the blood group will be, the blood will be green in color due to the presence of some other pigment. Okay, so this particular PDF, is, uh, this particular uh, diagram is also, uh, sorry, this particular table is also helpful, friend. Next is they were asking about uh, secondary metabolite, which is specific for Brassica, that is your master like that. And here you can be able to find, this is in page number 703, uh, Brassica will be producing glucose inole. They are sulfur containing secondary metabolites, so they are derived from glucose and amino acid. This particular thing is specific to Brassica family. Okay, next, which of the following is not a vasoconstrictor? The correct answer is prostacyclin. So, prostacyclin is nothing but a prostaglandin which is produced by uh, your smooth muscle cell at the same time it is also produced by endothelium. So, this particular prostacyclin will be stimulating vasodilation at the same time it will be having an anti-proliferative effect by inhibiting smooth muscle growth. At the same time it also inhibits platelet aggregation. Next, cruciform chromosome structure during meiosis are found during, found due to which process so it is formed due to the process of tra transversion of course these particular cruciform structures of dna are important regulators in the biological process okay so they are formed from the inverted ribis which is created during the process of transversion or inversion okay so the next question uh, intron is present so this is a question so intron is present in mrna trna and ribosomal rna so in this article they just mentioned introns are present in pre mrna but they are absent in so after the process of splicing that is another post translation modification transcription modification these introns will be removed okay next introns are also present in various trna gene at the same time these introns are also present in uh, all kind of ribosomal rna okay so the next question uh, Pader Willi syndrome is due to. So, the correct answer is option number two. That is, uh, this particular syndrome is due to uh, uh, loss of chromosomal number 15, which is inherited from father. So, the type of inheritance it is due to paternal deletion. So, in those persons who are affected with that particular syndrome, they don't have the chromosomal number 15, and it is an example of your paternal genomic imprinting. So, from father, the chromosomal number 15 coming from father will not be a functioning well, or sometimes the genetic information will be missing in that particular chromosome chromosomal number 15 which is inherited from father. Next is Turner syndrome is due to non disjunction of female chromosome. Okay. Next uh, cell uh, so microfilament uh, that moving to, to through the nucleus. So the correct answer is kinesin and dyne. Both are involved in your uh, bidirectional transport of your nuclear. So kinesin they are involved in the they will be moving 
towards the minus end of your microtubule whereas uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so, kinesin, um, dynein will be moving towards the uh, minus end of the microtube. Regarding to kinesin, some family of kinesin, they, 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 they will be forming a kinesin superfamily. So, some family, they will be moving towards a plus A and some will be moving towards a minus A. Okay. So, both this kinesin and dynein are involved in the nuclear transport. Next is a most interesting question I can tell you. Which of the following statement regarding ABA is Correct. Okay. They are asking about the correct statement. First statement, ABA promote uh, precocious germination and BV parry. This is absolutely wrong. If you check textbook book six edition page number 429, uh, sorry, page number 517, here they had given. So, viviparous mutants, which means those plants that are undergoing a process called vivipari, they are ABA deficient. So, if ABA is present, mean it will be preventing the precocious germination. Okay, so uh, here they had telling like ABA will be promoting, no that's wrong, ABA will be preventing precocious germination, VV pari, whereas GA that is gibberellin will be promoting precocious germination. So, ABA will be preventing. So, this option is incorrect. So, we can't able to take this particular option because they are saying correct statement. Next, active form of ABA is an ABA beta D glucose ester. No, that's a wrong statement. And third thing is ABA synthesized only in plastic. That's a wrong thing because after the process of xanthoxin, it will be transported to cyto cytosol and in that cytosol only it will be converted into abscisic acid. So, both the plastic chloroplast and cytosol are involved. So, the last statement is the correct statement regarding to abscisic acid. So, here in page number 429 they had given. So, oxidation by ABA 8 prime hydroxylation will be hydroxylase enzyme will be leading to the inactivation of your abscisic acid. So, the last statement is correct. So, oxidation of ABA will be leading to the inactivation activation of that particular hormone. Next is plum transport with which carbohydrate. So, most commonly sugars will be translocated in the non-reducing form. So, this particular thing you can able to find in page number 293 in the 6th edition friends. Okay. So, most commonly non-reducing sugar alone can able to transport. So, option B is also correct. Option C is also correct. So, sucrose, raffinose. So, raffinose is nothing but it will be consisting of sucrose along with one galactose and along with that uh, stachyose that is uh, here you can able to find it will be consisting consisting of one sucrose and two galactose and the next important sugar that will be transported into this phloem is that uh, where back so, uh, course sorry if I am pronouncing them wrong so that particular sugar it will be consisting of one sucrose and a uh, three galactose molecule so, okay so next is with regarding to again and uh, match the following type of question q9 is an anti-malarian duct and caffeine is an stimulant morphine is an macrotic so macrotics is nothing but uh, that will be used to treat your pain so most commonly morphine and codeine are used for macrotic ducts but they are not coming from opm plant okay last is wind blasting so definitely from this particular wind blasting one question is coming in a uh, gate exam dvt exam csr examination so it is employed for cancer treatment and also it it works by preventing the cells from entering to metaphase stage of mitosis. At the same time, it will be blocking. Okay, so these drugs will be blocking the cell growth by stopping mitosis by interfering with the microtubule polymorphous polymerization. Okay. Uh, next is Hydra performs which type of uh, regeneration? So, in developmental biology 9th edition, they had given morphalaxis. So, Hydra regeneration will be, uh, the regeneration Hydra will be uh, through occurring through the repatterning of existing tissues like that they had given. But recent edition, like uh, the developmental biology 12th edition, 11th edition, if you check means, they had mentioned Hydra has a capacity to undergo all the three kind of regeneration. They have a uh, stem cell, so they will be undergoing a stem cell mediated regeneration and they will be going through the process called morphalasis and next thing uh, uh, they will be undergoing a process called epimorphosis. It depends upon where the cut is been made. If the cut is made between, in between means uh, they will be undergoing a process called epimorphosis and so in Hydra it will be performing all the three important regeneration things. If you want to share the page number of this particular thing, please do tell me I will be sharing you. The correct answer is option number 4. 
Next is circadian cloth. Uh, cloth. We, uh, they had given few statement with regarding to circadian cloth, and they ask us to uh, find out which of the following statement is strong. So first option is absolutely correct. The circadian clock are present in plant, animal, fungi, and also it is present in photosynthetic bacteria. Next, they are synchronized with environmental change. Absolutely correct statement. Next, it is influenced by prolonged darkness. Is the wrong statement. So option number three is the wrong statement. Last statement. It occurs in 24 hours day and night. Yes, absolutely. The rhythm is followed by 24 hour cycle only. Okay, so the next statement is which of the following is incorrect or which of the following statement is not true about platelet. So first with regarding to diameter of platelet. So the diameter of the platelet will be ranging from uh, 3 to 4 micrometers. So this is also a correct statement. And uh, lifespan of platelet is 20 to 30 days. This is a wrong statement because lifespan of platelet is 8 to 9 days. And it is produced uh, from bone marrow megakaryocyte. This is also a correct statement. And nucleus is absent. This is also a correct statement. So in platelet, they have every characteristic of all uh, cells that are present in human body but they don't have nucleus so they, they don't have any genes okay so that uh, the, the not true statement about platelet is that the lifespan is uh, 20 to 30 days okay which of the following is not a fermented product okay so the correct answer is green tea cheese is a fermentation product and the kombucha is also a fermentation product black tea is also a fermentation product Okay, simply if you add tea powder to your uh, boiling water, it will be producing black tea, which is an again a tea powder is a fermentation product only. Okay, so this kombucha is a recent health drink. Okay, this is a fermented product. It, it is also belonging to tea family only. But this green tea is not a fermentation product. It is an oxidation product. The thickness of lipid bilayer is uh, 20 micrometer to 50 micrometer. It depends upon the location, it depends upon the cell type and also depends upon the preparation type. Okay. So, next is regarding to again gastrulation like they had asked where the blastocyte is being present. So, it is present between epiblast and hypoblast. So, in between epiblast and hypoblast, you can able to find blastocyte. Next is a general aptitude question where they are asked if two dice are rolled together at same time, what is the probability of hitting four? The correct answer is 1 by 12. So, if you uh, roll, a, uh, roll a dice once, there are 6 possibilities. Here, they are rolling two dice which means there will be 36 possibilities and what is the probability of getting four? The number of favorable outcome of getting four is three. So, total number of possibilities is 36. So, you able to find 1 by 12. So, next is an evolu ecology loss. They had asked about the theory of evolution and ecology. I think both are asked or whether it is a separate question. So, graduation theory was given by James Hutton and phylogenetic theory was given by Ernst Haeckel. And Huxley has promo ha he was developing Charles Darwin's theory for evolution. So, next is secondary growth of cambium occurs only in gymnosperms and dicot. Next, there was a question regarding sea urchin development. So, in sea urchin, mostly uh, large micro will be obeying auto autonomous specification and all the cells of C, C chain they have a capacity to follow autonomous uh, specification and conditional specification okay so first the autonomous cell uh, will be uh, they will be specified themselves and then they will be secreting few paracrine factor and gestacrine factor and they will be providing a conditional specification so based on the environment they will be they have a capacity to change their face Next, which represent gene help in process of vernalization requirement of arabidosis? The correct answer is FL6. So, you can be able to find this particular page is day 6th edition, 607. Here, they had find out flowering locus C is a repressor of the process of vernalization. So, mostly this particular FLC will be present in, will be highly expressed in non vernalized shoot apical region. Okay. At the same time, after the process of vernalization, this FLC gene will be switched off. So, this particular FLC is then repressor of flowering. If it is expressed in a particular region, means then that particular region will not produce any flower. Next, there was a match the following type of question has been asked. First is RAD51. So, RAD51 will be providing instruction for making particular protein which is essential for repairing DNA damage. Second is RAD52 and or RAD59. So, this RAD52 is located in chromosomal number 12 and it is playing an important role during hemo, uh, homologous recombination. Like they are mediating two important roles. First is involving in DNA strand exchange and next is they are involving in DNA to DNA interaction. The third role is that they will be protecting the quadra duplex in mammalian. Instead. Okay, so next is a soap leaven. So soap leaven uh, is uh, sorry, it is SPO leaven. Sorry, it is SPO leaven. So forgive me for that. 
it is SPO11 which will be creating double standard break so this SPO11 is involving in initiating recombination during meiosis process okay so the active site of SPO11 will be consisting of tyrosine next is MRN MRN is involved in non-homologous end joining repair system okay so so next questions we will be discussing in next video so thank you friends thanks for watching